Owais says, what does Islam say about worldly education? Because some of my friends say that no need to study because none of your education will be used in Akhirah, in the hereafter. May Allah save you and your family. Ameen. Owais, what you have heard from your friends is what all failures say. Those who are complete failures. Those who have no contribution to the society. This is what they usually justify their laziness with. Knowledge is divided into two types, Islamic knowledge and other than Islamic knowledge. So I will not speak about Islamic knowledge. Other than Islamic knowledge is divided into two types as well, halal and haram. As for haram knowledge, knowledge of sorcery, this is knowledge, you learn, you implement, but you enter hell because of that. Knowledge of astrology and the impact of, this, of the stars on our lives and how they can tell the future with, this is also blasphemous and kufr. Knowledge of what they call beautiful arts, sculpturing, making statues, the most severely punished in hell are those who make and imitate the creation of Allah. Those who make sculptures, portraits, they draw beautiful arts such as music, ballet, dancing, acting. All of this is haram knowledge. Though it's knowledge, you study, you get a BA. And then we have the halal and permissible knowledge, such as medicine, engineering, physics, mathematics, chemistry, all these applied science, sciences, as they call them, or others that are similar to that. Their claim that such sciences will not benefit you in the akhirah and the hereafter is not entirely correct. On the contrary, these are communal obligation. If we have a village or a country that are all PhD holders and they're all professors and doctors in fiqh, in aqeedah, in sharia, in hadith, in usul, all Islamic sciences. This is utopia. This is extremely fine and great. If they fail to produce one medical doctor, one civil engineer to run their city and check the construction of buildings, one architect, one um, mathematician to teach the kids and the students mathematics in the university, at school, if they fail to produce someone to, full, uh, to fill this gap in the society, the whole village or city or town would be sinful because they failed in this communal obligation. Allah Azza wa did not tell all of us to become scholars of Islam. Allah says in the Quran, and it is not for the believers to go forth to battle all at once. For there should separate from every division of them a group remaining to obtain understanding in the religion and warn their people when they return to them that they might be 
cautious. Chapter 9, verse 122. What does this mean? It means that even at times of war, there should remain behind people of knowledge to learn, to acquire Islamic knowledge, and to warn their people when they come back with things that are halal and haram and be able to advise them. This is a communal obligation. So to claim that we don't need engineers or medical doctors or police officers or administrators to run the country, this is absurd. And as I said earlier, this is the justification of lazy people. Now, having said that, a medical doctor is not prohibited to become a scholar of Islam as well. And I know personally a lot of medical doctors, engineers, airline pilots, administrators, um, uh, lawyers who are knowledgeable in Islam and Islamic sciences. So there's no real segregation and we don't have men of the Lord like monks or priests that have nothing to do but to possess knowledge of the religion and control the community. No, we don't have this. They're all mixed. You can have someone who's a medical doctor and an imam of a masjid and who gives fatwas. You can have someone who's an industrial engineer who does this and write books about Islam because he studied Islam. He also learned from great scholars of Islam and it contributes to the process. So what they're saying to you is totally uh, uh, bogus and not entirely true. 